Today, I want to talk about some coaching news and give you my take on some recent coaching hires. And all that's coming up after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You got to help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up, kinfolk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related, sports related. We have a good time. Today, I want to talk about some recent coaching news and give some evaluation, some grades, some look-throughs, some background on some of the new coaching moves and coaching hires. And start with some news that Ed Orgeron chose to share earlier this week on local radio show Off the Bench in Louisiana, where he said, look, struck out on a couple of defensive guys that I wanted. He expects to meet with another guy that he wants at the top of his list on Thursday following the national championship game, and we can see where that's going, but what we do know about LSU is that they wanted Marcus Freeman, and Marcus Freeman ended up at Notre Dame, and that is a tremendous get for Brian Kelly. I had posited that I thought Marcus Freeman would be an outstanding fit for Notre Dame following the departure of Clark Lee. The reason I thought that is because he'd done such a great job at Cincinnati, but there were folks that were pointing out to me, perhaps Marcus Freeman is waiting on a head coaching job, and he still might be. But the opportunity to coordinate the defense at Notre Dame in another year where they could quite literally make it to the college football playoff, and it's going to get really juicy because Cincinnati-Notre Dame is on the schedule for non-con this year, As Cincinnati expects to be really competitive once again, Desmond Ritter is going to be challenging for that QB1 spot in the 2022 draft. But what Marcus Freeman did at Cincinnati cannot be ignored. I think that his unit was the strongest unit of any group of five unit in college football, not just defensively, but across the country on both sides. Eighth in scoring defense, allowing just 16.8 points per game. They were undefeated all the way through earned a berth to the Peach Bowl, and lost on a last-second field goal to Georgia. Gave up 30 points just once all year long. I've been very high on the former Ohio State linebacker who has done most of his work north of the Mason-Dixon line. So if he would have chosen to go south to LSU, that would be a tremendous win for LSU and I think would have put him right where he is now. At least in Notre Dame, he is familiar with the Indiana area. He was familiar with the Big Ten area. He understands what it means to compete against the likes of Ohio State, let alone Cincinnati, and to try to pull players in that want to work for him. He's going to coach linebackers as well. Tremendous get for Brian Kelly. And also, it's proven Notre Dame is willing to ante up because there was a time when assistants would be lured there at a lower price saying, you get to coach at Notre Dame. I don't really think that that's that big a deal anymore. As a matter of fact, knowing what their reputation is in postseason bowls, It's hard to defend that it is still a Yankees job, though Brian Kelly has done an outstanding job in making that team competitive, but we saw the ceiling. And Alabama is in another stratosphere. They're on another planet. But I'm not so certain that Notre Dame is one of the five best teams in college football, right? We saw what happened when they played Clemson in the ACC championship game, and they were utterly destroyed. That game was a lot further apart than the scoreboard. But knowing that you're going to be able to probably get better on defense than you were last year, knowing that the defense was so good, good enough that the coordinator got a job elsewhere, that's a really good spot to be in if you're Marcus Freeman. Another thing that I wanted to point to was Urban Meyer apparently had another conversation with Shad Khan at Jacksonville. He seems to be putting together a coaching staff, and we'll see if the number gets right. But it feels like Urban Meyer could be on his way out of his role as Fox Sports analyst in trying his hand at the NFL, which is really interesting for a number of reasons, not the least of which is we've seen college to NFL jumps before. Sometimes they are guys that just want to get back to the NFL. And most recently, we've seen Pete Carroll go from SC to Seattle and win a Super Bowl, right? That's remarkable. But we've also seen it fail. It failed with Nick Saban. It failed with Steve Spurrier. Bill O'Brien is becoming a cautionary tale, and Matt Rule and Cliff Kingsbury are still trying to figure this out, and those are the dudes that come up with off the top of my head. But I get the allure of a guy like Urban Meyer, who has had tremendous success in college, and there's not really anything left for him to do in college. But if he could do this thing at the NFL level, in a place he's familiar with, Jacksonville is not that much farther away from Gainesville, it'd be remarkable. Plus, you got the number one overall pick. 
expect Urban Meyer to entertain drafting Trevor Lawrence, but knowing what he knows about Justin Fields, I'd be interested to see what he has there. They also have a bunch of young, rising stars. You put the right staff together, you can make some magic happen. Another one that I wanted to discuss was Jake Peets taking the offensive coordinator position at LSU. Tremendous backstory for him. This is a guy who walked on as a long snapper at Nebraska and was going to go to law school before Bill Callahan decided, hey, look, I think you should take this summer camp job at UCLA because I think you could be a pretty good coach. And he said, all right, your son Brian is over there. I'll go see what's up. He went there. He had a ball. And that turned later into GA, right? And then he ends up at Santa Barbara Community College and coaching safeties and special teams and their strength coach ends up training Al Harrington in the NBA, gets on as a strength coach at the Indiana Pacers, wants to get back into football, ends up getting back in at UCLA when Clark Lee was the linebacker's coach, was a defensive staffer. Norm Chow comes in. He begs Norm Chow to move him to offense. Norm Chow tells Rick Neuheisel, hey, I want this guy to help me coach quarterbacks, and that's what that became. He does a stint with Jacksonville as a scout, puts together a bunch of playbooks, gets familiar with using computers to make better football people, eventually lands at Alabama as an analyst, takes a job at Oakland in 2015, rises to quarterbacks coach, is coaching guys like Derek Carr, ends up as a running backs coach here recently with Christian McCaffrey, and really has been a dude that learned a lot from Joe Brady and what he's done there, and then pairing him with DJ Mangas, who was the right-hand man to Joe Brady, the way that George Munoz was in that booth on that 2019 season, could be interesting with your offense coordinator and your passing game coordinator. Also, one of the really cool parts about this is Ed Orgeron is not looking for a ball control offense. He's looking for an offense that is trying to put up 50 a game. If you want to throw the ball 50 times a game, you're going to get to do that. And with a guy like Pete, who is apparently just notorious for detail and being detail-oriented and being able to develop the quarterback position, which is huge in college. I think this can be a win for LSU with two younger dudes calling the plays, putting together the scheme, and we know what that passing game coordinator can turn out to be for DJ Mangas, who's going to get four hundred grand to do the job, getting about $1.2, $1.3 for Pete's to do the job. So I'm interested to see what Ed Orgeron is able to bring in on the defensive side because they got to pay Bo Pelini $4 million in one lump sum by January 31st to get him to go home. That's that's how much money they're dealing with at LSU. Money is not the issue that they're facing. They want to make sure that they get the right guy for the right job. And then the last thing I wanted to touch on here was Dennis Simmons getting some heavy interest from Steve Sarkeesian to be his wide receivers coach at Texas. I'm not sure that that's what Dennis Simmons would want to do, but it's certainly leverage for him for renegotiating his contract. And one of the things that I pointed to earlier in the years is Dennis Simmons get enough credit for what he has accomplished at Oklahoma. Not bad for a dude that came up playing linebacker as Steve Sarkeesian was a quarterback in Lavelle Edwards' BYU. This man has created a Bolitnikoff Award winner in D.D. Westbrook and also a Heisman finalist in D.D. Westbrook. He's seen Hollywood Brown become a first-round draft pick, CeeDee Lamb become a first-round draft pick. He's developed them straight out of high school into NFL stars. He's developed them straight from junior college into NFL stars. He's outstanding in his recruitment and his evaluation. Marvin Mims was a true freshman last year and for my money was the best wide receiver that Oklahoma had on its roster. A wide receiver depth chart that is loaded with four and five star talents. And he was outshining guys like Theo Weiss and Trajan Bridges didn't get to play. And I get Jaden Hazelwood didn't get to play a whole bunch. But still, seeing Marvin Mims out there, when we expect to see Charleston Rambo out there, for instance, tells you a lot about how good he is at developing these guys and whether or not he's going to let the talent show itself and play out. So it'd be interesting to see how much money they want to put in front of him and whether or not he would take the gig. But he's already been elevated to an associate head coach role at Oklahoma. And I'm not sure that there's anything else he would want to do except be a coordinator and if that's the case, perhaps you don't turn down the Texas job, right? Because it's just kind of like Marcus Freeman, a lateral move to another place that maybe gives you an opportunity. But you've been ruling the Big 12, champion, uh, Big 12 Conference as the Big 12 champion at Oklahoma. And many Oklahoma fans 
would see that as a step down. Stop hitting the mic, RJ. I don't see it necessarily as alluring as some other folks, but we'll see what kind of pitch comes with that, what kind of responsibilities come with that, what kind of money comes with that. And I want to take a moment just to point out that Sam Pittman does such a great job keeping Barry Odom. Like, he's not going to get a lot of credit for retaining his defensive coordinator, but this is a man who was on the radar of Texas, who's on the radar of LSU, and a man who had done a lot with a little at Arkansas. He had a dominant defensive tackle that he was able to use to his benefit. They were rushing three, and they were dropping eight, and they were saying, come beat us in a 4-2-5. You know, it was a lot of fun to watch that Arkansas team. I think they're going to be good in 2021, and I believe that Sam Pittman has them headed in the right direction. So the task right now is for Lincoln Riley to try to retain Dennis Simmons. We'll see if that happens, see if Steve Sarkeesian can add to his coffers. Marcus Freeman is an absolutely gangbusters, awesome hire for Notre Dame. Big pickup for Brian Kelly. Ed Orgeron going back to the well, going to the Joe Brady well of who do you like? Joe Brady saying, I like my guy Jake Peets, who's coaching running backs for us at Carolina. Go get him. And then DJ Mangas is right there. Good stuff there. All right. That's it for me. Oh. Not it for me. There will be a Talk the Line show on college football on Fox on Sunday morning. I'm going to be hosting with Sam Panyatovich, who is the gambling analyst at foxsports.com. Should be a really fun conversation where we're going through some question and answers. I'm going to be more football-centric. He's going to be more gambling-centric. But join us if that is something that you're into. I'm also going to be on the watch party for Fox Monday night, talking to, uh, chatting up. Joel Klatt, probably about some NFL draft stuff and some look ahead. All right, it's it for me. Deuces.